want you as you give tonight to give your attention to a young lady that's going to come and to share with us tonight. Many of you know her dad, Dr. John Vining. Standing here is Meredith Vining Parker, and she's going to come, and I want you to welcome her tonight as she comes to share with us tonight. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. I already feel the presence of the Holy Ghost here. Do you? Amen. I came by to tell you tonight that just as our brother mentioned to us that God truly is Jehovah Jireh and he provides for us. If you have lost your job, he is Jehovah Jireh. If you have no peace, he is Jehovah Shalom and he is our peace today. And this is my testimony. If you are sick in body, he is Jehovah Rapha and he is healer today. He has been healer to me, and he is no respecter of persons. So if you are sick today, whether it be in your marriage or in your body or in your mind or in your finances, he surely is Jehovah Rapha tonight, and he is a healer. On June 24th of this last year, I gave birth to my first and only child, Olivia Grace. Everything went well. The pregnancy was great, and I ended up having to have a C-section. We didn't know why. There weren't any problems. But that was the way it turned out. And eight days later, I was at my home with my husband and my baby girl. And I told my husband that my heart was racing and beating very fast. So he told me to go sit on the bed and he would come to check on me. He came in behind me and just as he started to ask me questions about what was going on, I collapsed back on the bed, started gasping for breath, and very shortly thereafter had no breath. He checked my pulse and I had no pulse. I was clinically dead. He began CPR on me while the paramedics arrived. And then when they got there, no one knew what was going on. Of course, he was praying and pleading the blood of Jesus. And he had called my in-laws and my parents and told them, plead the blood. Plead the blood. We don't know what's going on, but Meredith just dropped dead at my feet. When the paramedics got there, they had to shock me not once, not twice, not three, five, seven, but nine times they had to shock me to get my heart beating. But I want to tell you on that fourth time, my husband, who is filled with the Holy Ghost and is a minister of the gospel, felt like he should go get his Bible, which is the sword of the Spirit, and lay it at my feet. And at that time, after that fourth shock with no change, he laid that Bible on my feet. And I want to tell you instantly, my heart began to beat again. He prayed over me, Lord, your word is a sword and it is sharp as a two-edged sword. And I needed to cut asunder these chains that are binding my wife right now. And the Lord did just that. The reason that he had, they had to shock me four more times is because when they would move me, my heart would be agitated and would stop again. And again, no one could figure out what was going on. I was airlifted to Erlanger in Chattanooga, and it was determined at the age of 29 that I had fallen victim to a massive heart attack. I had developed a tear in the main artery of my heart, which bled and clotted. Now, that's unheard of. The report that my husband received when he got to the hospital was, she probably won't make it, but if she does, she'll have severe brain damage. Do you remember this song? Whose report will we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. And that's just the report that my husband and my family believed, the report of the Lord. You know what that song goes on to say? His report says, I am healed. And then at the end it says, his report says, victory. They were pleading the blood of Jesus over my life. And I was in a coma and they put a stent in my heart and they placed me under cooling blankets to induce me into hypothermia. And I was in a coma. They lowered my core body temperature to 92 degrees. And during that time they were trying to stop the severity of the brain damage by slowing down the swelling of the brain. Again, the neurologist gave such a bleak report and said that surely after being clinically dead with no breath to the heart or the brain, that I would be severely brain damaged. I was clinically dead for almost 20 minutes. But on that second day, this happened on a Wednesday night, and on Thursday morning, my husband received a word from the Lord, and it was from Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and this is what it says. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn 
but he will heal us. He is smitten, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight forevermore. I want to tell you tonight that the Lord kept his promise, and on that second day, they took me out from under those cooling blankets, and they started to let my body temperature warm up, and they told my family, there might not be any change. Don't expect much, but I want you to know that immediately my eyes began to flicker, and I began to squeeze the hand of my family members and I tried to talk over the ventilator the Lord had kept his promise and on that second day he revived us and on the third day this again was a waiting game they took the ventilator out they took the breathing tubes out and they said we'll just have to wait and see this is pretty much the time when we're going to be able to assess how much brain damage she has incurred but I want you to know that they told my family that I would not be able to talk for hours or days days or at all but as soon as they took that feeding tube out of my throat brother Lowry they I immediately said thank you so much for taking that tube out of my throat again on the third day the Lord had kept his promise and he had raised me up I want you to know after that time that they moved me to a regular room and I continued to get better and the doctors were amazed and they have had to admit that I have received a miracle. You might know that someone who is not saved might not admit that, but my cardiologist just a couple weeks ago told a group who I was speaking to, this is surely a miracle. We did not know what to do, but we know that God intervened and he did a miracle. When I went home from the hospital, I had to go into cardiac rehab. The first day that I got there, I could do two minutes on the treadmill. And 12 weeks later, when I left, I was working out three times a week, 45 minutes a day, with no trouble, no shortness of breath, no heart palpitations, no chest pains at all. The Lord has revived me back to true health, back to a normal health. Let me end with this. I was a teacher. I am a teacher. This happened on July 2nd, so I could not go back to work this year. I lost my job. But again, Jehovah Jireh, he is my provider. We have not missed one payment on a bill. We have not been late on one single bill. But the Lord has provided where there seemed to be no way. And I got to get the desire of my heart this year and stay home with that baby girl that he blessed me with. And I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. And there might be some here who have lost their job. And I want to encourage you today. I believe that you can leave here debt free. I believe that somebody can walk up to you today and give you a check to pay off all your school loans and your mortgage and your car payment. Well, listen, when you've been raised from the dead, you just are foolish enough to believe that the Lord can do anything. Yes! He can do anything. His arm is not short towards us. His arm is not shortened towards us. He is the I am, the great I am. He can do the impossible, the miraculous, whatever you need him to do today. He is that that you need. Are you his child today? Then you are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. Glory. Let me sing this song because this is my testimony. He touched me. Did you hear me? I said he touched me. <laughs> 